In this video, I'm asking a question. Is there a golden eyepiece? And I will try to answer this by uh, referring to my own experience. There are many eyepieces available. You can get as little as 1.6 millimeter Wixen HR to 70, 80 degrees, some of the very rare eyepieces. There are three inches. But for the normal uh, eyepieces that uh, we use in the amateur telescopes, we use either uh, one and a quarter or two inches. Uh, there were 0 0.96 inches, the called Japanese uh, standard eyepieces. But uh, they're getting rarer and people don't use them as much as they used to be. They were kind of, you know, in the, the time has passed. So uh, one and a quarter eyepieces and uh, two inch eyepieces. These are the most common uh, eyepieces used by the amateurs. They're widely available. You can buy them as cheap as you like or as expensive and costly as you like. In my experience, uh, in these two categories, there are um, zones or areas that uh, we have the best possible image combined with the widest field of view available, free of all kind of or most of the aberrations. Aberrations are means the errors or distortions you see in the field of view of an eyepiece. So this can be uh, things like uh, astigmatism, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, curvature of the field, field curvature. Uh, shift of the focus from the center to the edge of the eyepiece and chromatic aberration which is famous is the colors you will see when you're looking at an object uh, like colors of rainbow. In my experience the range of eyepieces that you will have always have the central part of it clearer than the outer parts, no matter how expensive they are, as expensive as this 21 millimeter uh, ethos, 100 degree eyepiece, which costs you as much as a fridge, a big fridge, two door American style as you call it, and uh, or as cheap as uh, any eyepiece that you want, for example this 20 millimeter uh, Skywatcher eyepiece, which is a kind of like a Kellner almost. The center of the field of view is always the clearest. And when you go away from the center, you introduce more of this kind of distortions of the shapes of the objects. In the night sky, we mean the stars. You see the stars which look like seagulls, they have wings as if. Or they're stretched like a, you know, pear or a droplet. And, uh, or the center of the field of view is different in focus than the, uh, when you're away from the center of the field of view. In an eyepiece like a, a Teleview Ethos, uh, they claim they have tried to correct this. And uh, the same with the APM 20 millimeter eyepiece, 100 degree eyepieces. What I notice is that the maximum uh, aberration free area that you can achieve exists in a range from the 20 millimeter to 26 millimeter eyepieces. If you go beyond that, you are increasing the aberrations when you move away from the center of the field of view. So the optimum uh, aberration free area of an eyepieces are in the range of the 20 to 26. When you go for something like a 19 millimeter, the aberrations you expect to be less, like this Ostara eyepiece, or like this Takahashi 18 millimeter. Or like this, uh, you know it by the different names, this is a star wave 
18 millimeter. So practically, we are increasing the area available to the to the eye, which is clear of vibration when you're using this kind of lower power eyepieces. At the same time, because you are increasing the magnification with the lower focal length, you increase the contrast between the star and the background of the sky. So, in the two inch eyepieces, I found that manufacturers actually have used this kind of thing. You see it, this is experience, you use them on the field, but the manufacturers have built it based on that. So you see 20 millimeter, 100 degree eyepieces, HTC, or 21 millimeter uh, Teleview Ethers. Uh, Hyperion 21, 24, they're very good. This is excellent 22 millimeter, one of the best eyepieces you can have, uh, operation free almost. And uh, then you come to this gem of the eyepieces, Max Vision or Explore Scientific or the Meet uh, the Series 4000 or 5000, 82 degree eyepieces, 24 millimeter. These are the gems. They are the best operation free. They give you that central part, which is operation free. If you want something with a bigger focal length, you, in, you include all those aberrations which exist near the margin of the field of view. So they give you that central part. The same here, when you use a, something as cheap as this, probably five pound or something like that, $10, five pound, seven pound, something like that, depending where you buy it. This is rare, of course, super uh, 20 millimeter. This is a Sky Watcher one. Uh, so you're using that central Part, which is aberration free. This uh, silver top uh, Celestron, which is now this one, is a generic um, a clone of it. Then you come to the 23 millimeter one, 62 degrees, a Svibony Aspheric, which is the, one of the best eyepieces you can have in the for telescopes uh, with a focal ratio of seven and higher. Then you come to this beautiful gem Teleview Panoptic, one and a quarter inch eyepiece. Gives you widest field of view possible with a one and a quarter field, uh, a one and a quarter um, um, millimeter eyepiece. It gives 68 degrees of aberration free most of the most of it. As you go a little bit higher, the aberration increases. So when you are in the 23 and 20 millimeter, your aberration is completely probably gone. But yet we have you know, a good part of the field of view in this skull watch, a super 25 millimeter eyepiece, cheap eyepiece. It comes with usually with the telescopes free. Uh, the same can be told about the mid uh, 25 millimeter uh, multi-coated eyepiece. Uh, Celestron Elox is one of the good ones. 25 millimeter. Again, it gives you that central port, which is operation free. And uh, then we come to the Celestron 26 millimeter. This is a gem. It's comparable in a way to, you can say that uh, RKE um, at Mount Scientific. And then 26 millimeter plus all again, so super plus as the meat calls it, 26 millimeter. A lunar planetary LP. Uh, I don't know what LP here means. I should I should not say lunar planetary probably. <laughs> anyway, this is a meat is used to come with the uh, telescopes that need provided, and they will come as uh, included in the kit. So, in this range, if you choose any eyepiece, there will be the maximum uh, uh, field of view. Um, maximum area of the aberration free field of view and uh, what I should call it a golden eyepiece. This is the golden range from 20 millimeter in the two, range, two, uh, two inch eyepieces from 20 millimeter to 24 millimeter. Uh, you have the golden range of the eyepieces which are mostly aberration free. The 70 millimeter one is perfect in my experience then come the rest. Then after that, I believe this is this one. And uh, this one, of course, this has a little bit uh, less clarity than the, the other ones. 
I have a video about that comparing it with other eyepieces in this range. Then we come with a 21 millimeter or 20 millimeter HTC. I prefer this one to this one, but anyway, it's, it's, it's personal choice. You may be thinking different. And again, in this range, one and a quarter inch from 20 millimeter to 26 millimeter, you get the widest field of view, aberration free free of any kind of another distortion you can have a good look at the whole field of view and enjoy a sharp you know error free color free most of the time depending on the telescope of course you use uh, eyepiece and image that the eyepiece provides to you so this is the this is my assessment based on experiment uh, experiment uh, my experience Based on actually what is also the manufacturers have realized they can produce aberration free. You can have something 82 degrees eyepiece in the range of 26 millimeter or 31 millimeter Nagler, for example, type 5. But then again, you are going either with a very chunkier eyepiece, the weight is increased, the length of the field, the length of the eyepiece is increased. So you have to make compromises because the field of view will have aberration. When you want to correct it, you have to do a lot of expensive, you know, additions and modifications to that, that increase the range of the price of the eyepiece. So uh, I, that's the reason with the kit that you buy, when you buy a telescope, the kit which comes with it usually contains 25 millimeter eyepieces, then goes to an, uh, 10 millimeter and or nine millimeter. They're usually two eyepieces they have. And uh, there is a reason for that. The manufacturer knows that you get the best view with that. Of course, we later may choose to go for wider field of view, higher uh, uh, F numbers for the focal length for the eyepiece. And uh, we use them as a f um, finder eyepiece, as I call it. But these are the eyepieces that you will use most of the time. A finder eyepiece, if you use it, it the image will be washed out with the light for example a 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter most of the time it in, it also includes all the skylight background can be pollution or anything and if you come all of that with the increased uh, area that you're watching the image uh, it will all come to you so the less contrast between the bright object that you want to see a galaxy or nebula and the sky background which equally looks as bright so you will not see much difference. So discerning and uh, identifying the objects, especially faint ones, will be difficult. So in this range, you can have the balance between the sky background and the light which comes from the sky background and the uh, field of view available to you. Uh, so this is the eyepieces that you will use most of the time in your telescopes. Either it is one and a quarter inch, and I recommend these ones, any of these are good, or uh, two inch ones, which any of these are also good. Um, some of them are better. This one is the gem of the, it's a Skywatcher SWA, 22 millimeter, 70 degrees eyepiece is a gem of eyepiece is if i can say there is a perfect eyepiece is this one <laughs> yes and it's rare you don't find it anymore it seems uh, you find the 17 13 yet in the market for sale i don't know why they don't make it uh, is as with the cars when the when a car is so good after a while they don't make it anymore probably because it doesn't make economic sense to you know sell it at that price anyway uh, my recommendation is that if you want to uh, find the eyepiece or kind of eyepiece that you can use most of the times you will see most uh, you know telescope time in this range you will not go wrong these are the golden eyepieces this is the golden focal length 20 millimeter to 60 uh, 26 millimeter in the one and a quarter and 20 millimeter to 24 millimeter in the two inch uh, eyepieces. Golden eyepieces exist. These are the ones. That's the diamond, that's the jewel, crown jewel of that golden ring.